Hi, and welcome to Fairview Range Focus. I'm David Hall. Uh, today I am joined by uh, four individuals and uh, see Kelly Lawson, uh, Gladys Carlson, uh, Lauren Siebert, and um, where'd you go? Heidi Jones. Thank you. <laughs> um, so welcome. Um, thanks for joining me today. And we're going to talk about behavioral health, um, a number of services that Fairview Range offers. And uh, as I understand, you all have a role in that department. So let's, let's start. I think people always enjoy hearing a little bit about who you are and what you do. So uh, Kelly, if you'd be so kind, why don't you start and tell us a little bit about your background and what your role is. Okay. Well, hi, David. Um, <laughs> Kelly Lawson. I am the Director of Behavioral and Emergency Services at Fairview Range. Um, I have been there for the last 20 years. Um, most recently, helping um, with resources and overseeing the behavioral health unit. So I'm excited about being here today, and we have a lot of great services that we're going to discuss. Okay, good. Welcome. Lawrence? I'm Lauren Siebert. I am the Partial Hospitalization Programs Intake Coordinator. I have been there for about a year. Um, our program just recently opened in May, and that's when I switched over from facilitating groups on the inpatient unit. Okay. You said partial hospitalization program. I know we're going to talk more about that, so okay. we'll, we'll come back to that because that, some people may have caught that and thought, okay, now what is that? But we'll, we'll come back to that. Yeah, and uh, so when we say PHP, that's the partial hospitalization program. Uh, all right. Very good. And Heidi? Yes. I'm Heidi Jones. Um, I'm currently the supervisor on the behavioral health unit. I have been with Fairview about five years now um, on the fifth floor, and um, I was a floor nurse to start out, and then I took a PCF role on the unit. And, and now what's I'm, PCF? PCF is patient care facilitator, okay. so you're charge nurse on the unit. Um, so I was there as a resource for the other nurses, and now I am the supervisor. So. Okay, very good. Welcome. Okay. And Gladys? Hi, uh, David. Um, I, my position at Fairview is to be a mental health practitioner working with the partial hospitalization program. I have been with Fairview for the last seven years, maybe a little over seven years. Okay. And initially I worked on the unit, doing groups, teaching groups on the unit. And once we opened up the partial hospitalization program, then I switched over there. And so I do group therapy with the partial hospitalization program, which we call PHP. All right. Yes. Very good. Well, thank you, and uh, now we kind of know a little bit about you. Let's talk about uh, the programs that are offered. Um, I know that uh, Fairview has offered behavioral health in some form for a long time, um, and but things have evolved in different programs um, today than no doubt what we've had in the past. Um, mental health is a, a a common thing uh, or for uh, people being treated for com or mental health illnesses. So is that a condition that you see a lot of? Is there a lot of people that um, are seeking mental health treatment? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I was doing some looking at the NAMI website. That's the National Alliance for Mental Illness. And that statistic on that website said about 43.8 um, million of the population deal with mental illness every year. So that's, to put into perspective, it's um, one in five, and it's as common as having a silver car or brown eyes. So. One in five. And yep. that's, okay, that, that really, put for me, puts it in perspective mm -hmm. too. I can deal with small numbers, I can deal yeah. with that. Um, one in five, so that yep. sounds um, pretty common. Adults, yeah. yes. Okay, and, and adults, mm -hmm. okay. And I'd say that those are only, those are the ones who have been in for a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not even counting the undiagnosed. Right. Okay. So what, what kind of conditions? I mean, when we, when we say mental health issues or, um, or conditions, I, I find myself kind of thinking, well, what, what, what is that? What, what would be a condition or what would be a mental health issue that would be treated or treatable? Um, I think there's been a lot of education and research behind what constitutes a mental condition. We used to call it psychiatric diagnosis. But as we raise awareness, we're identifying that it's more about behavioral health. So those other names really draw a st stigma to the diagnosis, and we want to try to alleviate that. So we're going more with behavioral health. So it encompasses a lot of other um, aspects of a patient's life. So we have their physical well-being, we have their emotional well-being, which is about their behavioral health, as well as their mental well-being. Mm -hmm. So when we take care of patients as nurses and clinicians, um, we want to encompass the whole patient. 
all aspects of their life. So that's what we're really doing with our services. We have inpatient services um, through Fairview Range, and I think that's probably what we're most known for. We do have an acute inpatient psychiatric unit, and then we're offering a lot more for outpatient services because we're identifying the significant need in our community, and we want to keep people healthy mentally, emotionally, and physically. So it's the same as going to your regular physician or practitioner for a checkup. Mm -hmm. um, offering those services, keeping people healthy and out of the hospital is our ultimate goal. Okay. Um, so you said um, an acute unit. Mm -hmm. what, what does that mean? What, is it, what constitutes acute? So if we have somebody who needs hospitalization, so it's kind of the same aspect if you went into the emergency department and you are having chest pain or shortness of breath, um, you would be evaluated, identify that you need to be hospitalized. The same is for behavioral health. You come in, you're in a, a crisis situation. Um, patients may be suicidal. They haven't been able to control their depression. Um, they may not have had their medications refilled. They're not working any longer. People are in crisis, so we will provide an evaluation in the emergency department, or people may seek help through their clinician at the clinic. Mm -hmm. And when they do that assessment, identify, you really need this hospitalization. So then they would contact our nurse practitioner um, that oversee the inpatient unit and provide the report, the information, and what's the best plan of care this patient needs to be hospitalized. So that would constitute inpatient behavioral health admission. Mm -hmm. We currently do have 34 beds. We've recently expanded over the last year. We have two separate units. We have a north unit and a south unit. And so far this year, we have hospitalized 600 patients in our inpatient acute psychiatric um, in, in facilities. Now, is yes. there a difference between the two units? You said north and south. Is there a difference? No, there is no difference. Um, we offer the same services on both sides. Okay. It's a very multidisciplinary team that will evaluate the patient once they're accepted for hospitalization. Um, What's that mean, multidisciplinary? What? So we have multiple disciplines within the behavioral health unit that will see the patient. So we have our nurse practitioners okay. who are psychiatric certified. We have our registered nurses who are all certified. And Heidi, do you want to expand a little bit on what their certification entails for our RNs on behavioral health? Um, the certification um, entails a course. They take a course which specializes in um, psychi psychiatric diagnoses and medication management. Um, and then there's a certification exam at the end which certifies them to so we have and their specialty, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, so it sounds like all the staff are um, specially trained for a behavioral health mm -hmm. unit. So we have the RNs, and then we have our nursing assistants and our LPNs that have special training mm -hmm. related to behavioral health. We also have social workers. We have discharge planners. We have occupational therapists. And we have our mental health practitioners, such as Gladys, mm -hmm. who provide group therapy each day um, of the week, several times throughout the day. So it's a very multidisciplinary team that comes together to help with the crisis that the patient is currently um, experiencing. OK. So a patient that might find themselves um, on in the inpatient unit, how did they might they get there? Are they they might refer themselves? They they walk in, or they're referred by a physician, or is that? It, it's a physician referral. Okay. So um, they would come to the emergency department. If it's a crisis situation, then the ER doctor would make that referral. If they go to the clinic and see their provider at the clinic, and they identify that they're in an acute crisis, they would contact our nurse practitioner, and then they would be admitted. Okay. All right. Very good. So. Uh, does that incur in the clinic environment too? You mentioned emergency department. Could yes. that incur in, in the clinic Absolutely. setting too? Absolutely, okay. yes. Yep, so wherever they want to seek help, wherever they you know, go to, whether it's law enforcement, if they come to the hospital, those resources will know who to call to help, to help get that assessment and that admission. Okay, very good. You mentioned um, stigma. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think probably most people are familiar with that in the sense that um, mm -hmm. within our society that you know might be looked down upon to say well I have a, a mental health issue or behavioral health issue mm -hmm. but yet it seems like that is do you think that's changing it seems like from my perspective but I don't know a lot about it but it does seem like it's changing at all Did, do you get that sense at all yeah I think yeah. over the last probably five years there's been increased awareness there's 
increased resources and that helps reduce that stigma that goes along with this, you know, changing the words as well as psychiatric. Mm -hmm. um, people mm -hmm. might relate that to being, you know, in a psychiatric institution and we've really kind of changed that culture. Mm, that's and good. raising awareness and reaching out to your family and friends as we know that if one in five people have a behavioral health diagnosis, talking about it, mm -hmm. being available for them, and that really helps. Mm -hmm. Gladys, you were gonna, can you add to that? Yeah, that there, there's resources out there. You know, you were talking about resources, Kelly, and like there's NAMI out there, they're trying to, you know, incorporate the families and do groups for the families so that they can be more exposed. And with us doing something like today, just making people more aware mm -hmm. that it's not such a stigma. You know, if you're sick, you're going to go to the hospital right. or to your doctor. And the same with this. And instead of saying mental illness, behavior health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it shifts that whole feeling of the stigma that would make people have a sense of shame that they have a mental health diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And so making it more acceptable changing the terminology mm -hmm. to make it more acceptable. Mm -hmm. So is there, is there other actions people can take to show their support uh, for someone who has a mental health or behavioral health diagnosis or treatment? It's for the layperson? Yeah, I mean, or family, maybe mm -hmm. it's family members. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, what, uh, is there th other things we can do to show our support for them? I think one of the most important things is just talking about it, putting it out there, letting people know that it's okay to talk about yeah. it. Um, providing support by helping your loved one get to the doctor, get to their appointments, get mm -hmm. to the pharmacy, fill their meds, that type of mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Just support. And, and one of the things that we do have, it's a book called a, a Wrap Packet, which is Wellness Recovery Action Plan. And it helps the individual become aware of the early warning signs mm -hmm. or when they're getting worse. And in there is a package, is a sheet, that makes the family aware of what the individual is going through. What do they want when they're feeling depressed? Mm -hmm. What don't they want when they're feeling like that? So that the family is so aware and they can support the, the, the client, the individual, when they're going through that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Because it's pretty serious to the individual and it helps them support by helping the individual catch their early warning signs. Are they sleeping too much? They're isolating a lot more. Oh, their hygiene has gone down. Mm. And then the support is there for them to say, hey, let's look at this. Mm -hmm. You gave me the sheet to look at, and I want to be here for you. Mm -hmm. I, I liked what you said, Heidi, as far as um, talking about it. I mean, with family members or if someone is you know, having some personal struggles, mm -hmm. like you said, they're, I mean, they're not sleeping. Uh, their personal hygiene is um, being left mm -hmm. um, that having these conversations about it to maybe identify you know if there is a problem that needs further treatment mm -hmm. so, good uh, Lauren I think I want to turn to you um, we uh, touched a little bit on what your role is on the behavioral unit but maybe you could elaborate for us a little bit and how you inv are involved in the, in the care and treatment um, so now I am more specifically related to partial hospitalization program, which is one of our outpatient services. Um, and it's designed to kind of fill in the gap of, instead of just sending a patient from an inpatient unit who just had an acute crisis and just sending them out into the community and trying to have them succeed, partial hospitalization is there to like <laughs> slowly reintroduce them into the community, help them with any stumbling blocks they may have, make sure they are on the right medication, make sure they have the right supports in place. Um, and my job specifically is to schedule their first initial visit, get them involved in the program, um, call and remind them about the diagnostic coming. assessment, you have an assessment yeah. coming up and Lauren will call and yeah. make sure they're, they're aware they have a, an appointment with us because mm -hmm. yes. we both work with the PHP program. Okay. So you said, and that's an outpatient program? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So it's 9 to 3, Monday through Friday. The patients come to the hospital, they participate in a group, and then they go home at the end of the day. 
So like checking in for a clinic appointment. Yeah, it's okay. an outpatient service. Okay. So we talked a little bit about our inpatient and mm -hmm. what that entails, and Fairview um, has really identified the need, and we want to be there for our community. So we are expanding a lot of our outpatient services, and the partial hospitalized hospitalization program is one of those and it just started in May yes. we can take up to nine patients each day mm -hmm. and it is a three-week program and it involves coming um, each day and they do groups with Gladys as well as our social worker they have a diagnostic assessment they will see our nurse practitioner so again kind of that multidisciplinary team to make sure that they have the resources to stay healthy mm -hmm. and stay out of the hospital in addition to our par partial hospitalization program we have the behavioral health home and that is facilitated through our clinic so we have a behavioral health coordinator as well as a um, social worker that currently have 50 patients enrolled in our behavioral health home and they will call them check on them weekly what resources do you need and then we also have our therapists in the clinic we currently have three um, Steve Breitbarth he does family and marriage counseling and then we have Maria Cesari who does adult therapy and then we have Jennifer Kendall who focuses more on pediatric okay. outpatient therapy and then we also have Dr. Misty Eliason who is a psychiatrist and okay. she is in the outpatient and then we have Val um, yes, Porcello. Porcello that just started yeah. with us and she is a psychiatric behavioral health nurse in the, practitioner in the clinic, in the clinic. Okay. so lots of outpatient services are being added so it's um, that continuation of care yeah and I think Everybody understands, and we've heard so often, I mean, the hospital is an expensive place to mm -hmm. receive care. Mm -hmm. So an outpatient mm -hmm. program, obviously, is going to cost a lot less. Mm -hmm. No doubt it would be easier for a lot of patients to, you know, be seen on an outpatient basis versus mm -hmm. having to move in and stay for a, a right. period of time. And one of the analogies that I use with the PHP is it's the same thing if you went in and you had your hip redone. You're going to go each day for physical therapy. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. You had that acute crisis. You're going to go to your outpatient mm -hmm. appointment for the next couple of weeks, and we're going to make sure that you're remaining healthy and you're on the, the mm -hmm. track for recovery. That's a great way to describe it. That makes, mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. Yes. So several times you've mentioned group. And I, and I know, Blast, you do some work with in group therapy. Yes. What, what exactly is that? What does that look like? Um, what we do as soon as we get in in the morning, well, from 9 o'clock is when the groups begin, we do a psychotherapy group, which is just a talk session like what we're doing right now, except patients are reporting on what was your night like? Did you get sleep last night? Oh, you had to deal with your mom last night. Let's talk about it. How did you do that? You know, how did it go for you? Did you apply any of the skills? Be and then we do another group at um, 10 o'clock. O occupational therapy also does a group with us, but this is right throughout the day, and at the end of the day, we have a wrap-up group, and then we ask the patients, what was your take from today? Mm. Not what did you learn today, but what did you get out of today specifically? Because they're not going to retain everything all at one time. By the end of the day, the patients are just like, oh, I need to go home right now. <laughs> this has been pretty, mm -hmm. a lot of information. Mm -hmm. But that way, if they can just get something out of it. So we teach skills all day long. We are teaching skills, uh, helping the patients with emotional regulation. You know, how can I balance my mood? Um, some skills to cope with that. Mindfulness, being in the present moment you have now. Let's not live in yesterday. Let's see what we can do about now. How can you cope with this present moment? Mm -hmm. Skills to cope with distress tolerance. Mm -hmm. um, interpersonal effectiveness. Uh, anxiety, anger. Um, any of those things that would help them with their diagnosis because pretty much they have to have a diagnosis to come in there mm -hmm. to be a part of the program. And it's so effective, uh, David, because they come in and say, I used the skill, skill yesterday. I used my five to one. Well, what's five to one? <laughs> David will say, what's that, yeah, you yeah, know? Yes. And five to one is just being aware of your environment. Be mindful. Are there five things you can see, four things you can hear? three things you can touch, something, two things you can taste, one thing you can smell, whatever order they want to use it in, that would be one of their skills. Mm. And the whole thing is interruption. 
interrupting that uh, six lane highway, you know, where all their thoughts are just going, ah, you know, and that helps with grounding. And what works for you? Let's try this. Um, any other skills, Lauren, <laughs> that you want to interrupt with? <laughs> you know, just picking up skills that would be supportive okay. to them. And, and is that a program that's available for both those in the PHP program as well as inpatient? Or? Yes. And pretty yes. much it's similar skills. Okay. Yes. And so really it's a good follow-up as they come into our program, mm -hmm. teaching them on letting go, looking at trauma, PTSD, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder, how are you coping, have you tried this, let's see what skills you could try and work on, oh I like this skill, mm -hmm. I'm going to try this one. Mm -hmm. Kelly, you said um, the program started in May. Yes. Um, it sound, from what things that I've understood, it sounds like it's been very successful and, and really had an impact on patients' lives. Yes. Is that true? Has it, you found that to be the case? Have you seen some great examples at all? Yes. I, we are receiving great feedback okay. when the patient is finally done with the three weeks that it was very beneficial mm -hmm. and it's really helped them with their coping skills. And we are monitoring their readmission back to the hospital. Um, but we're finding it a very valuable service okay. and you don't have to be in the hospital to be considered for the PHP. Okay. You can Great. go to your clinic and talk to your provider about it and just tell them that you heard about it and you're interested and um, Lauren can, can help with getting you facilitated into the program. All right. Very good. Now is there, after someone has completed the three-week program, is there any kind of follow-up afterwards or any kind of care that occurs um, after they're discharged? It's something we're looking at, this, you know, step-down program, because that's what the patients are just crying about. We need something more. We've been in this for three weeks. Mm -hmm. And at this point, patients just stop in to check in with us mm -hmm. and say, well, we nice. just want to give a report on how we're doing. Mm -hmm. And yet we're there supportive. Some might still be having some challenges, mm -hmm. but not at an acute level where they feel they need to be readmitted. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had a couple of readmits, but... Pretty much they just come in and give a report and you know I'll say well I want to give you this handout that I think you should work with oh please please give me homework you know so uh, there's an excitement there's a real strong um, motivation to be well and was, as right. sorry right. as part of the program we do set them up with other services so we make sure they have med management in place we make sure that um, one of the other programs we work closely with is range mental yeah. range range mental health range mental health yes <laughs> um, I was thinking of the acronym RMHC um, and they do groups what you have to do an intake for them too if you want to do that but we make sure they have the sheets stating what groups they do do um, so we don't just kick them out the door when they're done with PHP and say, mm -hmm. here you go, survive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we yeah. absolutely follow up with that. We have a whole sheet of range mental health groups that we encourage them to connect with. And Lauren will make some calls to make sure that there is follow up for them with that yeah. or with their therapist. Okay. Yeah. Heidi, I'm asking you a question. Um, I suspect that, I mean, you're working with patients, uh, sometimes maybe for a longer period of time if they're inpatient, mm -hmm. uh, even an outpatient, you must really um, develop a bond or connection to a lot of the, of the patients where they, they do come back in to say, I want to talk. Um, is that yeah, true? Yeah, you do. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really nice to see somebody come in um, who is in crisis and know that you had a role in them getting better mm -hmm. and going mm -hmm. home to live a functional life. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it must be real rewarding. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And for people who may not have a support system outside of the hospital, it's nice to come in and have a full staff full of people who are very understanding and supportive of their recovery mm -hmm. wellness. Yeah. Mm, great. So lots of, I mean, there are different opportunities from a treatment standpoint, inpatient, outpatient. Mm -hmm. So um, how exactly does someone make an appointment? Now you touched on it a little bit, Kelly, but anyone can elaborate on that just a little bit or, or refresh our, uh, for everyone's benefit, how exactly that would occur? For the partial hospitalization program? Is or that either. what you were? Um, I have Lauren speak to that because okay. that's uh, where she from fits an intake, in. Yeah, the, <laughs> yes. um, you can't make an appointment to uh, go inpatient. That would be something that would be decided with the patient um, in the emergency room or at the clinic okay. and that would be based on their level of acuity um, so if they're not safe to be in the community 
then they would be sent up to the inpatient unit and that's something that's usually court like with the patient mm -hmm. they discuss it with them um and there is voluntary people who ha say hey i don't feel safe right now mm -hmm. um and that would be one way of getting to the inpatient unit for PHP, it's a little bit different because since it is outpatient, you do have to be in the community. Um, so it's a lot of what we're seeing is for patients who struggle with depression or anxiety, um, bipolar, they would make an appointment with their clinician. Um, if they see somebody at Fairview, it makes it really easy. If you don't, then you would coordinate with your clinician and me and we would get them the information they need. They call intake down in the cities and we set them up for a, di a diagnostic assessment with our social worker, just discussing what you're hoping to get from the program, um, why you think you need this, what are your supports out in the community right now, do you think this is something you could really benefit from, and then they start group after that. Okay. Thank you. That's, that's, that. that's very helpful. Well, obviously, um, as you said, one in five uh, individuals are going to have a diagnosis of, of a behavioral health or mental health illness. So it is fairly common. Um, well, I think, um, I'm sure I, I share your pride in the services that Fairview offers and to, to treat uh, mental health, um, behavioral health issues. So thanks for the work that you do. Um, unfortunately, we're out of time. It, it always goes by so quickly. So uh, thanks for joining me uh, and talking about behavioral health and the services that Fairview offers. Um, it sounds like great programs uh, and uh, very much needed. So um, um, thank you to, to Lauren and Kelly and uh, Gladys and thank Heidi. You, David. Thanks for joining me today. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me. And uh, thank you for watching uh, Fairview Range Focus. I hope you enjoyed it uh, and learned something maybe you didn't know about. So I um, hope you'll watch next month for another segment of Fairview Range Focus. Thanks for joining us. Giving Public Access Television would like to thank U.S. Bank for providing us with studio space.